Japan, five, four, three, two, one, and you are good to go. Hello, and welcome to the Petro Pavlosk Full Year 2019 Financial Results and Q1 2020 Production Update presentation. We will begin with a presentation and then continue with a Q&A session. Throughout the presentation, you may send through your questions via the Q&A platform in the top left-hand corner. When sending questions, please include your name and the name of your firm. We will answer as many as we can during the allotted time. <clears throat> please note this webcast is being recorded and will be accessible on the company's website and the LSE Issuers Services page. Today, I am pleased to present the Right Honourable Sir Roderick Lyne, Non-Executive Chairman, Dr. Pavel Maslowski, Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Elias Samaklova, Deputy CEO, and Mr. Danila Kotilarov, Chief Financial Officer. Pavel, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining our conference. And because it's a very new technique, so I apologize if sometimes somebody will be on mute while thinking that he is talking, as it happened to me right now. So if you will look at slide six of our presentation, uh, the highlights, I would be absolutely happy to repeat many times what this slide says, because it's indeed uh, impressive, I believe, results. It was 19, 2019 was good year, or like winemakers are saying, vintage, vintage year. So, and that is reflected by our share price performance. Uh, my colleagues very modestly put a five years curve of share price growth, but if to look at one year, we outperform, we outperformed all the peers. One of the most important thing in operating the company is the corporate governance. And you can see that we now have a absolutely the composition of the board was absolutely matching the FTSE 250 requirements where we actually, I mean, index get this year. It's the board is, I believe, strong, independent, highly qualified, and uh, have a very good, I would say, optimal proportion of executives and independent non-executive direction directors. It's very sad that Sir Roderick is uh, retiring. We used to work with him for with small break for 12 years or more than 12 years on board of the company. And I met Sir Roderick even earlier when he was ambassador of UK in Russia and was very interested in details of unique cooperation and unique at that time joint venture between UK and Russia. Pavel. And yeah. Pavel, I'm, I'm very sorry. I believe there's a technical issue and no one's actually being able to watch this. Um, so I've, I've just been asked to stop stop the presentation for now. Um, I'm, I'm getting a message we need to start again, essentially. Mark? Is the operator available? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. How many people are, 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 there's no one watching this, correct? We should be streaming to the London Stock Exchange page. I think there's an issue with that stream to the LSE page. The LSE team are trying to fix that now. Um, but at, currently, I don't think anyone is able to gain access <clears throat> to the LSE platform via the link that we have been given. That's the one on the RNS and on our website. And 
the one on the RNS, the one on the website, and the one that was circulated by the team. Um, so um, I think it must be an issue with the LSE platform. Um, no one is watching this right now. The LSE are working to fix this. Mark, can you can you help at all? Can you or Glenna help? Yes. Thank we'll you. make sure that they have the right link. It's not the question about the link. The link is correct. But when you try to register, you get an error message. So there's clearly some kind of issue between the whole streaming service and the page on the London Stock Exchange. I'm seeing something from Glenn that says it's fixed. Hang on one second. Yeah, I can confirm that it, it, it is fixed. Um, I think if people reload the page, it now works. Um, great. I'm very sorry. I, I think it's best if we perhaps start from the beginning. That's fine. Should we give people some time to, to should we email the people that have told us yes, that they couldn't I'm, get in? If we start in five minutes, I'm going to email those people back now. Okay. Perfect. Great. And then what will happen, they, they will start, they'll see it right from the point that you begin again. And then we'll edit out that first part when we do the uh, video on demand. Okay, we're live now. So, um... so let's go back to Patrick. Let's give him a minute. Excellent. I'm ready when everyone else is. I think we're good to go. I'm seeing um, people that are listening fine and they're ready to, to restart with us. So, Patrick. Um, ready? Ready. All set. Good for you. Hello and welcome to the Petro Pavlovsk full year 2019 financial results and Q1 2020 production update presentation. We will begin with the presentation and then continue with the Q&A session. Throughout the presentation, you may send through your questions via the Q&A platform in the top left-hand corner. When sending questions, please include your name and the name of your firm. We will answer as many as we can during the allotted time. Please note this webcast is being recorded and will be accessible on the company's website and the LSE Issuers Services page. Today, I'm very pleased to present the Right Honourable Sir Roderick Lyne, Non-Executive Chairman, Dr. Pavel Maslowski, Chief Executive Officer, Dr. Alia Samaklova, Deputy CEO, and Mr. Dana Danila Katilarov, Chief Financial Officer. Pavel, please go ahead when you're ready. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for joining us and sorry for this technical disruptions. If you look at highlights page of our presentation, uh, it's number five, you can see that 2019 was indeed good year, as winemakers are saying, vintage year. We outperformed uh, on all the major metrics. And further, you can see that uh, this performance is reflected by our share price. This graph shows the evaluation of the, or the growth of share price for five years. But if to take one year curve, we outperformed all our peers. One of the most important four issues for the company with us is in Russia and uh, listed on London Stock Exchange, exchange and uh, included in FTSE 250 is uh, strong corporate governance. And through this year, thanks to Sir Roderick Line, especially, we built a strong, independent, highly qualified and diverse board. It's very sad that Sir Roderick is leaving the chairmanship. We worked with him for, with 
small break for 12 years on board of the company and his input to the success and growth of the company is absolutely great. The executive team are almost the same as it was in previous years. And we're all at the moment doing our business as usual, are fighting with uh, consequences and reality of COVID pandemic. On page 12, you can see the list of all the measures, all the actions we are taking to make our operations continuous and not disrupted. My guess is that this type of measures are very typical or very similar to all the companies, all the companies of our nature, mining, gold mining companies. So the most important, and I would say crucial, is how management serious and consistent in implementing these actions. At the moment, we don't have cases of coronavirus, but you understand that life is much more complicated than any models of our life. So another aspect of approaching pandemic is to be ready for emergency situation and to take actions if it will be necessary. We believe also that all necessary arrangements are in place and we can mitigate uh, the situation if somebody will be infected. Coming to operational review, it's slide number 14. You can see that it's a normal advantage of multi-mine operations. Some mines did better, some mines slightly worse than 2018, but in general, we meet it our budget, we meet it our forecast and produced, as I said, good results. I believe, and I will maybe mention it further, that one of the major results of 2019, it's a stable work of pressure oxidation. We were very happy and reported many times that the ramp, ramping up, commissioning, ramping up process was very smooth, but now almost a year and a half of performance shows that it's indeed reliable operations for our company. And we can be sure that it will continue its good performance. Talking about 2020, you can see that we in good shape to meet our forecast. We are giving quite a broad range for, ah, sorry, a little bit ahead of the slides. So first quarter was quite successful on uh, on the side of operations of our own operations of mining our own ore as well as processing third party concentrate. We're also on schedule of construction the flotation unit on Pioneer, which will double our flotation operating capacity. 
and on schedule to commission it in fourth quarter of 2020. You can see that our target, slide number 17, is to consistently enlarge processing through POCs of our wrong concentrate and reduce our dependence on third party concentrate. One of the major reasons is that processing of our wrong concentrate is more margin is higher, accordingly costs are lower. And one more takeaway of this slide, if you look on the right side, the contribution of refractory, the, the plan of contribution of refractory ores in our, on our processing facilities starting from 2019 and up to 2022, if to take away the, out of this graph, refractory material, we will, you will see how, what could be the possibility of declining of our production if we would stay only with non-refractory material and would not having uh, pressure oxidation. So the strategy taking company more than 10 years ago appeared to be absolutely justified. We have historically very good track record of adding our reserves and resources. I can remind you that except the Pakrovka deposit, which is now depleted, all the gold we mined and all the reserves and resources we have at the moment, it's a result of our, our own exploration success. In these numbers and figures, you will not see any, anything we bought, anything uh, non-organic. And there is a, one note on this slide, which is very important, which says about topper. We still have quite interesting and promising potential for enlarging and improving the quality. I mean, first of all, grades of our reserves. There is a big potential of Ergenskay deposit from, again, from the amount of the reserves and resources, but also we're allocating at the moment higher grades, which can boost the production all on Albin. And we started more detailed exploration of uh, topo deposit because it's our big and satellites of topo deposits. It's our uh, good potential to enlarge production on uh, organic basis. All these actions, measures we are taking, efforts on production side, they are reflects in our balance sheet and uh, de-risking of balance sheet, reducing the cost of debt. Our financial director will mention this in more details and reducing our, one of the most important metric, it's the ratio of net debt to EBITDA to the end of 2019, it's around two, and we are looking to the end of the 2020, reduce it further. As I said, gu guidance for 2020, slide 20, uh, on production side is quite broad, and the major Reason for this is uh, the access to third parties concentrate. We are much more certain about our own production. 
but we are seriously depend on uh, third party concentrate. And when we were giving this forecast at the beginning of the year, the uncertainty was about how much concentrate we will manage to finalize to contract. And it's still uncertain, the, the reason why we're reiterating this broad forecast in May of the year is now we believe that there is uncertainty of impact of COVID, of pandemic on our suppliers. That's why we are still staying with this broad uh, projection, though it's almost half a year past. We are hoping to maintain reasonably robust total cash costs and reduce capex. And of course, utilize, start utilizing the pioneer flotation, new pioneer flotation facilities uh, to the end of the year in fourth quarter. And also you can see some guidance on our uh, performance in 2021 to 2024. And I will be glad to answer any questions regarding this. So actually in my short report, I mentioned all these items we reflected on slide 21 that group strategy is, first of all, operation efficiency, efficiency of pressure oxidation through increasing production of our own concentrate, strengthening balance sheet, dealing with IRC issue, and organically maintain and grow our reserves and resources. Now comes financial part of our presentation. So Danila, will you please switch in? Thank you very much, Paul Alexeyevich. I will... Um... Um, which one? Um, just give me a second. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, just give a second to resolve the technical issue. Is it better now? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can we please look at the slide? Uh, uh, can we load down yeah, the volume? Is it better now? Yes, it's much better now. Uh, yes, ladies and gentlemen, please, you can look at uh, slide number uh, 20 <coughs> of, uh, of three with the key of financial results of the last year, which Pavel Alexeyevich has uh, mentioned already are exceptional. Um, as you can see on the uh, slide, the volume of uh, sales of gold is the main uh, driver of the increase in the uh, amount of the, uh, in the volume of revenues and, uh, uh, and the underlying uh, volumetric of EBIT uh, of the group. On the next uh, slide, 20 of four, you can see the key highlights of the results. As you can uh, 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 know, the majority of the indicators are in green, uh, except of the, of the TCC, of which I will uh, give the comments uh, later. 
and uh, and basically the uh, the results of the net uh, um, profit, which uh, uh, which was the result of the number of the uh, factors uh, which affected uh, this, uh, uh, which affected the profit last year and the and the, and the year 2018, which are mostly uh, non uh, uh, cash like. Uh, like um, like devaluation right off of RC and reduced uh, uh, we reduced capitalization of the interest. On the next uh, a slide, you can see the bridge between the uh, between the of the year 2018 uh, um, and the last year, uh, showing that uh, uh, the vast majority of the increase. As I mentioned already, because of the increase of, of the volume of, um, of sales of the gold. Uh, on the next uh, 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 slide, uh, uh, 26, you can uh, see the breakdown and explanation of the of the mining uh, of the mining increase uh, 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 in the cost. So as you can see, there was a 10 percent increase in the total. Um, the TCC of the group, uh, with the main reason of switching of around the process of, of, of the non um, refractory ore uh, to the refractory ore and the additional uh, costs associated uh, with the process of it, as Pavel Exchange mentioned as well. Or separately, we can see additional uh, uh, costs related uh, to the procurement of the external uh, constant rate we are processing uh, uh, versus the production of our own. Uh, we shall uh, mention also the ruble inflation, which uh, which uh, um, which adversely affected the. Uh, which adversely affected the cost of operations, including uh, the cost of the uh, diesel of electricity. Uh, and partly this was offset with the uh, improvement in the grades and the recoveries, and also with, uh, uh, with, 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 the minor, with the minor depreciation of the ruble. Uh, on the next uh, slide, you can say the breakdown of the cost uh, uh, the breakdown of the cost across the uh, all mines and uh, and explanations of the deviations. As I mentioned already, the majority of the negative uh, uh, change is the is because of the additional uh, costs associated with the processing of refractory of ores. Uh, on the next. Uh, uh, a slide you can see the uh, uh, structure of operating uh, uh, the cost last year against the uh, year 2018 with a notable uh, difference of the cost associated with the procurement of the external uh, um, uh, concentrate process on the, on the pressure exercisation. Uh, on the next uh, uh, slide with information about the capex, uh, you can uh, uh, see that the total amount of the capital expenditures uh, for last year is lower against the previous year, uh, and, and that is a result of the commission of the pressure oxidization, of course. And on the last uh, slide I want to uh, draw your attention to is that um, is a number of the initiatives which uh, which group is taking, which are aiming on the improvement of the liquidity, and uh, and and the managing and the managing uh, of, of the volatility of the price. As uh, as a number one, I would like to um, I would like to uh, give information. Uh, uh, for that, we received the confirmation uh, of the confirmation of the DPB, the Gazprom uh, Bank, uh, who agreed uh, increasing and extending um, the, uh, the available um, 
a limit of the gold advances until the year uh, 20, 2004. And with the total amount, if, uh, if, if using, uh, uh, yes, if using the current yes, exchange rate, which is, which is nearly half a billion uh, US. And this is an important uh, uh, source of the liquidity which company uh, which company is able uh, to utilize if required. And uh, secondly, I, I would like to mention uh, and to draw attention uh, that the uh, agent arrangement uh, which the group uh, um, had before in which they have been uh, or fixed at the lower at the lower level of the gold uh, prices uh, have uh, a full expired last uh, uh, year, and uh, uh, or this year in line with the group's viability analysis, uh, uh, the company um, has entered into the number of the fixed and gold uh, uh, edges. Uh, Primarily uh, using the instrument of the zero cost uh, uh, callers, allowing for significant um, uh, participation in the in the positive uh, movement, uh, both in the price of the gold and also exchange rate. Although, um, although. Uh, uh, at a given the protection on the desired uh, level in light uh, in line with the viability analysis. Uh, I guess that's the end of the part which I I would like to talk about, and I'm heading over to Alia now. Thank you, Danila. Uh, moving uh, next to uh, another very important aspect of our business, uh, which is the central to the way we are running Petropavlovsk, sustainability. Uh, let's go to uh, slide number 32. Um, and uh, in this uh, part of presentation, I would like to talk about uh, extensive work that we have already done in 2019, uh, where we are now and uh, what are our aspirations going forward. Uh, sustainability was always very important uh, to the way we are running our business. Uh, but 2019 uh, became a transformational year, truly, for the company, uh, not only uh, from operational and financial point of view, from the improvements we, we made in those areas, but from the way we started bringing sustainability thinking in every aspect of our business and in every decision-making process. Uh, let's look at the results. Uh, our aspirations in 2019 were to improve key aspects of health and safety, corporal social responsibility, and environmental management. Uh, if we are talking about health and safety, we um, achieved uh, unprecedented uh, decrease in LTIFR, uh, 36%. And this is one of the most important parameters measuring safety of working environment for our employees. Significant, pl uh, significant part of uh, our contributors to this reduction uh, were a safety campaign uh, to raise awareness amongst our staff um, and also our upda updates we've done to POCs and underground safety policies. Um, uh, we also made a very good progress uh, on corporate social responsibility, where we set for ourselves a comprehensive program of uh, shareholder relationship engagement. And uh, we started building up uh, our, well, improving and building upon what we already have, uh, with our relationship with all stakeholders. And we will proceed with um, further implementations of this program in 2020 as well. 
uh, we also were able to obtain independent limited assurance statement from uh, independent um, agency in order to bring our reporting standards in line with the best international practices. From an environmental perspective, we, ha- we have made a tremendous progress. We achieved 15% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions. Also, we achieved a zero dis- discharge of water. I will talk about all these achievements in further details in the following slide. Um, and I just wanted to um, probably when we are on this slide to emphasize that uh, in line with our growing focus uh, on ESG, uh, last year we conducted a materia- materiality assessment uh, to define the sustainability topics that are most important to our business, to our stakeholders. This will enable us to report on these themes in accordance with core option, uh, um, with, with core principles of GRI standards. Let's look at the slide number 33. Uh, uh, let's talk about a very important initiative uh, which uh, has, has uh, was developed uh, by the company in 2019. We have joined the UN Global Compact, uh, which is a core part of our commitment to align our business with global initiatives in the area of sustainable development. Uh, we recognize that uh, the number of uh, uh, sustainable development goals uh, within this uh, the UN Global Compact are quite um, wide. So um, we try to, uh, in order to achieve the biggest impact, uh, we try to identify SDGs which are uh, which will benefit the most the communities, the environment, our stakeholders, and we've chosen five of uh, such SDGs which you can. See see uh, on uh, the slide 33. Uh, so the findings and conclusions of management were uh, presented to the members of sustainability committee uh, of the board and uh, who has carried out an um, uh, unprecedented amount of work on this. And um, the uh, sustainability committee uh, um, agreed with the management that uh, this probably should be for uh, 2019 and 2020, the areas of uh, focus of the company. Uh, so, uh, though we do recognize the importance of uh, 17 other uh, SDGs, we will um, be focusing on those five uh, in 2020. Uh, let's uh, look at slide uh, 34. Um, so uh, I wanted uh, to talk a little bit in more details here about uh, improvements to our health and safety tra- track record. We recognize both the personal responsibility of each employee at every site and workplace and the group's accountability for the safety measures and actions to create the safety environment. Uh, and we are striving for zero injury records. Uh, so, um, during 2019, we continued to implement stricter and more rigorous safety controls across the group's operations, whilst also uh, addressing any gaps in knowledge of safety procedures. Uh, training was conducted for relevant departments to reinforce the drive to create a safer workplace and to highlight everyone's personal responsibility in achieving these goals as well. As a result, in addition to a 36% decrease in uh, lost time injury uh, frequency rate, which I have already mentioned before, we were able to report uh, zero fatalities in 2019, of which we are very uh, proud of. Um, Talking about a little bit more general about our workforce, I um, uh, I would like to uh, emphasize uh, one aspect of which we, in general, we are very proud uh, of, and this is uh, our diversity of our workforce. And uh, the gender diversity is, uh, which we managed to um, uh, uh, which, we, which we managed to secure uh, in spite of the fact uh, the company operates in a uh, male-dominated industry. You can see that almost 25% of our staff are female. 
Moreover, picking up on the themes of corporate governance uh, about which Pavel Alexeyevich was talking a little bit earlier, uh, I'm pleased to note that now we have three female directors on the board of mining company, uh, Food City 250 company, and I think it's uh, uh, pretty much uh, an achievement. And uh, the fact that very soon we have a female leader of the board uh, is uh, really dis- does really distinguish our our company as a, a company which is uh, led on the uh, basis uh, on the principles of uh, diversity and inclusion. <laughs> Let's now move to slide uh, 35. So uh, our success uh, was not only limited last year to health and safety record, but also it could be seen uh, in the environmental stewardship. Uh, Obviously, uh, uh, working in the industry like mining, uh, uh, environmental uh, safety is one of the most important uh, aspects of uh, ESG uh, for us. And we were always committed to uploading the high standards of environmental management. Uh, Effective environmental protection is a key element of business strategy and fundamental to -to day-to-day operations, uh, fundamental to our planning, to our decision-making. Recognizing that our operations involve a number of environmental risks, we have uh, developed environmental management systems that help identify and manage those risks and achieve resource and energy efficiency. Uh, EMS uh, at all our operational sites are fully certified for compliance with ISO 14001. Our environmental risk management strategies are based on continuous and rigorous uh, monitoring, training, external assurances uh, by the state bodies and emergency preparedness. Hence, we had no moderate or serious environmental incidents and received no environmental fines in 2019, uh, which is, I think, pretty impressive. Using modern technology called by a disk that doesn't require open ponds or exposed tanks, we were able to maintain zero water discharge. On the energy and emission front, uh, whilst our total energy consumption did indeed increase by slightly less than 9%, this was far less than our production volumes increase, resulting in uh, 11% improvement in intensity. Similarly, we saw 13% improvement in our greenhouse gas emission intensity in 2019. This was aided by multiple factors, key among which are the reduced uh, usage of coal and series of energy saving initiatives like the waste heat recovery system and uh, at the POX hub. Uh, let's move to the slide 36 um, and um, <clears throat> we can talk uh, about um, our, uh, in general, our standing uh, amongst our peers. Though, um, as I mentioned, we had a pretty impressive, uh, we have done uh, pretty impressively in ESG area uh, in 2019. These achievements of last year, they don't mean, uh, obviously, that we will stop striving to get even better results uh, in um, every ESG parameter. We constantly monitor every industry's new development, best practices, um, engineering improvements, uh, and obviously, Obviously, we check our achievements um, against our peer group. And uh, whilst we already in a number of indicators, uh, like, uh, for example, mentioned gender diversity or greenhouse gas emission, we are really leaders of the industry. Uh, there are obviously a number of parameters where um, we need uh, to work more to be uh, at the same level as the best industry performance. So uh, we recognize these areas and these areas will be truly our focus in 2020. And hopefully next year, I will be uh, here to report to you about uh, those achievements which we will uh, do this year. And with this, let's move to the last slide. Let's talk about about um, our vision uh, going forward.
<clears throat> so you can see uh, here uh, some uh, key, um, just really uh, main uh, plans, goals, and aspirations uh, for 2020, and obviously beyond, because we're not going to stop on uh, on that. Um, and on the health and safety front, we remain committed to strive towards zero harm environment, and that will be done via robust policies ongoing group-wide training programs and aim to perform in 2020 no worse in terms of LTFIR uh, as we did um, this, uh, this year when, as I said, we achieved significant reduction. And uh, those measures which uh, Paolo Alexievich was talking about um, implemented by the company in response to a pandemic situation, their uh, speed of these measures, their comprehensiveness of, of them, and uh, which resulted uh, so far at zero uh, cases on our enterprises, uh, shows you actually the efficiency of management and um, the way uh, we are approaching uh, health and safety of our employees. Uh, on the corporate social responsibility, we plan to develop further direct engagement uh, between management and personnel, and that will be built up on our open dialogue with local communities, and we will implement the policies um, we've developed throughout last year and uh, throughout this year, and we will be uh, improving these policies and looking for others to implement, uh, which we will put us uh, in the line uh, with in, in line with uh, top uh, performance uh, in the industry worldwide. Last but by no means least, this year marks the first time we have included a measurable target for greenhouse uh, gas emission intensity reduction. Yes, it is not huge. It's 1% from 2019 levels. But I think it is very important to bear in mind that 2020 is the first full year of Pox Hub operations, which in itself is fairly energy-intensive operation. And uh, even uh, with this in mind, we are managing to achieve um, a reduction in uh, this key parameter. So uh, we will be developing on our uh, long-term intensity targets in 2020 as well. And as I already mentioned, I really hope uh, that in a year to year's time, uh, we will be able to report to you about our further achievements, not only in operational and financial field, but also everything which uh, concerns sustainability of our business. Thank you very much. Uh, with this, I would like to pass to Patrick, who will be uh, holding Q&A session. Thank you, Alia. Very impressive indeed. Um, I, I've just received a note that people are trying to submit Q&A um, via the, uh, the link that I mentioned before. That doesn't seem to be working. If you can see my name, it's been switched to my email address, pp at petropavlos.net. If you could please email me your questions and I'll, I'll filter them um, to the, the speakers. Um, while waiting for that, I, I had a couple that came in during the presentation, so we might just start with those. Um, the first one, the Pioneer Flotation Plant, assuming commissioning goes smoothly at the end of 2020, so the end of this year, what will be the increase in total own gold production next year versus this year? Pavel, do you want to pick that one up? Yes. Uh, on the slide, on our forecast for 2020, we are showing that we're expecting roughly between around 7-8% of growth for uh, 2021 of growth of our own production. Is the major impact is the flotation plant. Thank you, Pavel. I, I think maybe worth mentioning, that, and, that, and this is vitally important, and this is part of our strategy, because those ounces are really highly mar margin ounces as opposed to third parties. Thank you. 
Uh, the next question, Malamir's throughput of 4 million tonnes per year is exceeding nameplate capacity by 10%. Um, is there any further upside left at Malamir, and can the same success be applied to the Pioneer flotation plant once it becomes operational? Again to you, Pavel. Indeed, we are successful. Four million, while the design capacity of the plant is 3.6, is good achievement. So if anything we can do, it may be first percent. We can't expect more uh, throughput through the plant. Thank you. And another question. Um, we would like to understand how third-party processing expenses are spread across or incorporated in the, the different divisions, which could be Albin, Malamir, or Pioneer. So it's understanding where the third-party processing expenses are being allocated. Daniel. Uh, yes, I can answer that. Uh, Okay, all the costs associated with uh, uh, with the process of the uh, third party uh, concentrate allocated at Pioneer Mine. Thanks. Thank you, Danila. Uh, a question from Tim Yip of JS Funds. Um, could you give a little bit more detail about the guidance on working capital for this year? Financial Year 2020, Working Capital and our guidance. If I might, I can answer that one. Uh, in terms of the working... Okay. i just give a second to resolve it. Uh, in terms of, uh, of a change in, uh, of, of a change in the working, uh, 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 capital, we can, uh, give a comment, uh, or that, uh, we have a number of the big items, uh, yes, over the course of the last year. And I think what people are probably are interested in is the amount of the gold advances and, and probably also, uh, the moment in the, the moment in the working, uh, capital in relation with the procurement of the but uh, patient uh, uh, concentrate which we are buying externally. Uh, in terms of the uh, of the gold advances, uh, we uh, uh, in accordance with the schedule uh, uh, with the banks, uh, we are uh, we are looking at significant uh, uh, decline on the gold advances at the end of the year. Okay, uh, number of uh, are taken and are utilized as a uh, as an instrument of the of, of the optimal structuring uh, of the process of the buying the constant rate and uh, uh, and in reality the schedule of utilization is uh, is um, closely related with the with the schedule of the procurement of the uh, of the procurement of the uh, Great, and uh, uh, we cannot uh, give exact uh, uh, exact outlook on that. Uh, although, as I mentioned, in terms of the of the gold advances of the longer term uh, uh, gold advances, which uh, uh, which I mentioned uh, uh, before, we are expected uh, the is amount uh, be significantly lower at the year end. I hope that answers the question. Thank you, Danella. Uh, another question on Albin and the shift from the, the Albin pit to the Elgin Scoia pit. If we could please just have an update on, on how that's progressing um, as that transition uh, is ongoing at the moment. We are planning to start shipping the ore from uh, Elgin Scoia and start processing it in the Fourth quarter of 2020, this target is 
moves uh, because we have uh, some additional excessive to original estimates or on the main Albin pit. But at the moment, the road is and uh, the infrastructure there on Egenska and the road to Egenska from the plant is ready and we are doing stripping on the deposits. So we are absolutely even slightly ahead of the ahead of the plan. Originally it was uh, August, September, but now we see that it's uh, not earlier than October we will need to switch to Ergens camp. Thank you, Paul. I, I have a question from Raiffeisen Bank uh, analyst um, Mikhail Solodov. Um, could you please understand the effect of the gold hedges on our achieved price in the first quarter of this year, um, so the quarter that's just passed, and how that compares with the first quarter of last year, um, what, what the hedging effect was on the achieved gold price? Patrick, I can, I can, answer, I can answer this one. Yes. Uh, uh, in terms of the effect of the uh, hedges over the course of the uh, of the uh, uh, Q1 of this year, as we mentioned already, uh, uh, as I mentioned already earlier, uh, all the uh, hedges which we entered at uh, at the level of the price, which is much lower against the spot, they have expired at the end of this uh, of the last year, and hence uh, we have no uh, we have no any adverse effect. Of the hedges on the on the realized uh, top price of the gold of the uh, Q1 of this uh, year. Uh, if uh, if talking about the uh, yes, if talking about the, um, uh, what was an adverse uh, effect of the uh, hedges on the gold uh, price over the uh, Q1. Of the of the last year, I need to check the number. Although, um, in terms of the, uh, if you look at uh, yes, at the accounts, I uh, if I uh, recollect uh, uh, correctly, the overall the negative uh, effect on the realized price of the gold uh, over the course of the last year uh, was around um, oh, fifty dollars an ounce. Uh, about the Q1, I need to uh, uh, check this information. Okay, we, we can come back back on that one. Um, perhaps, Danilo, just continuing on the hedging theme, I've had a question from a private investor. Um, just trying to understand the size of the new hedging program we have in place, for example, 3.5 thousand ounces a month. Doesn't sound like very much. Could you perhaps give a little bit more detail on, on the intentions for that program? Uh, yes, it's an excellent uh, question, I believe. Uh, yes, if we look at the, at the price environments and the village of the price environment over the course of the uh, Q1 and basically each one of these uh, ESEA, obviously, we know what is going on and, uh, and, uh, and what uh, um, a kind of uh, a swing uh, we noticed uh, in terms of the price of the gold, in, to, uh, in terms of the in terms of uh, in, in terms of the exchange rate, interest rates, and obviously we uh, we at the board we are looking at uh, at what kind of the of the actions are appropriate in that uh, um, uh, regard. And the last uh, uh, a slide, which is uh, which I was talking about. I, uh, I basically would like to add that we are in the process of, um, uh, formulating the policy in regard with the viability analysis and the viability on the, on the group, which is a part of the, of our annual accounts and, uh, and also in light of the, uh, in, in light of the changes on the market. If we look at the amount of, uh, uh, hedges of the gold which we made already, yes, the amount, uh, uh, the total volume is not, uh, uh, big, although, uh, we believe that, uh, this uh, deal we entered to is, uh, is in line with the strategy of the company. Uh, in light of the, 
of the trends on the market. Uh, as I mentioned already, we are looking at this, we're analyzing the, uh, we're analyzing the uh, future of the, of the price of the gold, and uh, we will um, uh, get back with the policy approved and, and will inform the investors about that. At this moment of time, uh, yes, the amount of hedges is not uh, all big, and it's, uh, it's more opportunistic. Thank you, Danilo. Um, I have a question on IRC. So, obviously, we announced a transaction uh, this quarter. Uh, would it be possible to update the audience on how that deal is progressing with Stockholm, please? Well, we are aware through the communication with Gazprom Bank that they are in process of financial and legal due diligence. Some questions are coming from them, so it's it's work of prog- it's job in progress. So I I I, I can't estimate it's, it's 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 their decision. But one thing I can confirm that they are working on it because they are chasing us with questions, us and the counterparty. Well, I'm joining two questions from two different analysts here. Um, uh, one is what is what was at the end of 2019 the status of our gold prepays? Um, what what level were they, and where do we expect that to be over the course of 2020? Daniela, the total stage. I, I, I can answer that. Uh, the total amount of of the gold. That, uh, Yes, total amount of the gold advances uh, and the details of that are in our in our annual accounts uh, is roughly 180 million, and out of uh, which about uh, uh, million was the uh, was a really uh, short uh, term gold advance which I, I talked about already. Uh, at uh, at this moment of time, the total amount of the gold advances uh, is uh, is low at the level to, uh, which is roughly one uh, uh, hundred and twenty uh, million. And uh, as I'm as uh, as I mentioned already, answering another uh, a question about this, we expect a significant decline of the gold advance uh, until the year end. Thank you, Danilla. I, I think we only have time for a couple more questions. Um, uh, what, one more from a covering analyst. Uh, are you renegotiating the terms for the buy-in of the minority stake at TEMI? So that's the 25% stake that we're looking to acquire, uh, another transaction announced this year. Um, what, what is the timeline here, and could, could we please have an update, please? Uh, thank you. We have almost a year uh, time to exercise the option. It will expire in May 2021. So in the environment of growing share price and changing situation with the company, we are looking to try to to the extent as possible to renegotiate and fix the higher price, where, you know, higher price for the shares, which we're paying or another, another way how we're fixing this price. To remind you, when we fixed for the deal, which was announced and then, uh, put it into the circular, uh, and it happened at the end of January, we fixed the, highest achievable price, almost 19p, but between that time and the GM, the share price went up to 26p, so, and the number of our shareholders required to review uh, this approach, trying to renegotiate, which the management will 
try to do, but at the moment when we will be released from this COVID situation, it's very difficult to do by by computer, by TV. Thank you, Pavel. Um, so I've only really got one more question. Um, do we have any plans to improve the, the cost of debt in 2020? Daniela. Yes, I can answer that one. Uh, I guess Paolo Aksevich already mentioned in the beginning, uh, we had the improvement of the leverage, decrease of the leverage and, uh, an improvement of the, uh, of the cost of the borrowing and the maturity of the borrowing as the priority of the management. And, uh, on the basis of the, uh, in the base of the, of the levels where the public, uh, you know, or debt of the company is traced at the moment. We believe uh, uh, we are optimistically uh, are looking on the possibility on the improvement of the cost of the borrowing. And as I, as I, as I mentioned already, it's a priority. Uh, I can I can add uh, I can add also that although the gold advances uh, of the banks which we are talking about, although this is not really debt, it's a different kind of instrument. Although uh, we can uh, or can mention uh, that over the course of this year, we have achieved a significant improvement of the cost of this instrument. I hope that answers. Maybe I can add that uh, the debt which uh, we have now was uh, attracted historically when the company was in a very different uh, situation. They are absolutely unprecedented and um, impressive turnaround when the company, which company has made last year, uh, hopefully uh, should be reflected in um, agencies, rating agencies assessment of the business and uh, uh, obviously, it will depend on the market, but having uh, behind us results like this and hopefully some ratings improvements, I share the, Danila's optimism that uh, the company's business is uh, in a much more robust position to secure much better terms of debt. Thank you, Alia. I, I have no more questions, um, so really just to wrap up, um, thank you for the presenters. I, I do apologize for the technical issues. Thank you for the questions that did come in. Um, you can always reach out to us during the day if you have further questions. Um, but this now concludes our webcast. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.